to my mic. Plugin of the week is the Universal Audio Capital Chambers. Capital Chambers is a new plugin uh, by Universal Audio, and uh, this one is an emulation of the chambers, the acoustic chambers at Capital Studios in Los Angeles. If you're familiar with the Oceanways Studios plugin and you enjoy that as much as I do, then this is just another one to add on to that same thing. It uses the same technology, same basic concept and idea. And essentially what we have here, instead of the kind of tracking rooms, these are acoustic chambers. And acoustic chambers, um, these were designed by Les Paul back in the 60s. And acoustic chambers were designed as a way of adding reverb to something. So essentially from the recording console at the mix point, or maybe in the recording process, you would feed a split of the audio signal into a set of speakers uh, or a speaker, and it would feed into a reverberant chamber. Uh, chambers can be a variety of different sizes. I've seen them that are as small as just like four foot cubes that are all tiled, and I've seen them as, you know, as much larger, you know, rooms. And these were designed by Les Paul, along with the um, help of Bill Putnam Jr., and they were made out of reinforced concrete. They had a very particular uh, shape to them, which uh, gave them a, a unique, characteristic, beautiful reverberant quality. Uh, the reverb time on them is quite long. Um, and uh, there are a variety of different microphones that are included in here, so you have options. Essentially, what Universal Audio did here is they created emulations of four chambers. I'm not sure exactly how many were in the original studio, but... Um, these are the number chambers, so there was a whole series of them, obviously, and these were the favorites of them, uh, some being more modernized, some being, um, you know, with modern equipment in them and microphones, and some of them with the original equipment. So Universal Audio went about the process of capturing all of that and making it available here in the plugin. So just to do a quick overview, what you have here are the uh, four different chambers, uh, two, uh, four, six and seven, all right? So each one you could see here the differences. Uh, you'll notice that the lights on the Capitol, uh, top of the Capitol Studio uh, come on when there is a change. So just like Ocean Way, when you make a change with it, it takes a little bit for it to sort of catch up and then uh, load in the settings. And similar type of thing happens here. But you, each of the chambers has a different uh, slightly different characteristic quality to it. And then you also have controls over things like the reverb time. There's an on and off switch. So in its max setting, uh, as you see here, this will give you the full actual reverb time of the space. And uh, so you select from the four chambers. You have uh, four different microphones that you can select. You notice that the door opens here. Once the door closes, uh, then uh, that uh, should be loaded in. All right, so that's the basic idea there, or that's just an indication that something has changed, and then apparently when you leave the room, then it goes out. You can adjust the distance of any of the microphones here. When you set it to the maximum, okay, uh, and the max decay, that's the actual reverb time of the space, and everything else becomes algorithmic. So it's a combination or hybrid of impulse response, but algorithmic processing so that it can control the reverb time down to as little as one second. These reverb chambers give you like five to, you know, almost up to 10 seconds of reverb time, which is pretty amazing. Um, you have a pre-delay control. So obviously there was no pre-delay there other than the distance between the speakers and the microphones themselves. That's an acoustic pre-delay. This is one that's added in separately. Um, there's an equalization chain that's included here. This is actually placed on the microphone. So this is not the signal feeding into the chamber, but rather the output or what's captured by the microphones as you go through. Um, then you have a mix control here with the wet solo button and then a width control. So at the maximum setting at 100, the width is the natural width of the microphones that are placed here. So Universal Audio went with their, uh, there's a specialist there at Capitol Studios for the chambers they went through, and they tried to get everything as authentically recreated as possible, including bringing back in all of the original speakers. So this, um, without getting through all the model numbers, because they're maybe meaningless to most of you, 
was a lot of the original Altec speakers, and then there was also uh, a more modern one that was uh, thrown in here on System 7, which is a Tannoy system. So this was more from the 1980s, but the other ones are sort of more original to their uh, design uh, going back to the 60s. And then you also have the four microphones um, that are set up here. So and the first one is an Altec 21D. This is an omnidirectional microphone. as an RCA 44, which is a ribbon mic, figure eight, uh, figure of eight, I guess, technically. Uh, SM80. Um, okay, so this is a more modern uh, Shure omnidirectional mic that many of you may be familiar with. And the Sony C37A, which is also a classic tube condenser mic, uh, which is uh, set to a cardioid pattern. So uh, these are the microphones that were uh, set up uh, in the chambers. And so this is the uh, starting point. And then from here, we can adjust things, including having equalization on everything here. So this allows you to, you know, set plus minus uh, 10 dB on each of these gain stages. And there is a, a high pass filter, which is a soft filter at 6 dB per octave. Uh, so the bass and the treble controls work on a sort of Baxendall uh, kind of uh, type of EQ. And then the uh, mid uh, dip boost is a proportional Q uh, EQ for 500 hertz, which sort of gives you like, a, you know, sometimes can take the boxiness out of something or bring more character into something depending upon what you need. All right, so those are the basic controls here. So let's make a little bit of noise here with it. So I'm just gonna zoom out here just for a little bit of a second. Let's just cue everything up just for drums. I have the drums here. So let's just hear this on its own and uh, let's see if we can kind of get like a basic idea of what the different chambers sound like. So this is all with their original setting. It's gonna be very long reverb time, but just kind of get a sense of what it's all about. I'll leave it at the full line. Okay, so some of these sound uh, a little bit similar. All right, we're getting one microphone. Let's go back to the beginning here and, and go through this with some of the different microphones just so you get some of the different characteristics that are there. So you could hear the difference in brightness and presence and tonal characters. Let's just say that we wanted something that was a bit warmer sounding. So the, the uh, uh, ribbon mic here, the RCA 44, is probably a good place to start with that. So let's start with that and let's just change the distance just so you can get a sense of, of how that changes the character. So when you actually move this to a minimum position, it moves it closer to the sound source, which is gonna give you more of a direct type of sound. It will slightly lessen the reverb and uh, just kind of give you a tighter um, sound. So let's have a, a check that out. So just to hear the difference between that and the maximum setting, it takes a second for it to kick in once the light has gone off. Versus this. Now 
Now, this, along with the decay control, gives you a lot of characteristic options. So let's say that we, we started with something and we wanted like a tighter reverb. I could pull this right down in terms of the decay time and really tighten it up. Right, so I could get a pretty tight sound and then put a little pre-delay in here to add some depth. All right, so you're getting a little bit of flaming there because you are getting a little bit of direct sound in there. And when I say direct, when, when the sound escapes from the speaker, there's a direct signal which will still hit the microphone, and then there's the reverberant energy. So there's no way, uh, which is different from the input source. So when I say direct, that's not the dry sound that's feeding into the chamber. That would be feeding into the speaker. It takes X amount of time to get to the microphone, and then the reverberant energy on top of that. So the closer you get, the more of that direct type of sound that you get. So let's see if we can move this back a little bit, find some kind of balance in here. Right, so now we have this here. Now with, we also have a width control here, so I can mono this up, which really gives me a mono reverb, but in, in its 100% setting, it gives you the um, uh, original setup and settings, you know, uh, the uh, width that's normally in there with the microphone. So your starting position here in terms of the width is the natural width. It's not going like uh, beyond stereo or giving you any um, extra um, width outside of what's normal left right. And then we can shape the reverb here with the tone. So if we want to add a little bit more presence into it, we can, you know, do a little Baxendall style boost on the treble. All right, do a similar thing. Let's see what it's like on the low end. And then just to hear what the mid-range boost is all about. Right, so that adds like a nice body to the snare drum. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of that mixed in there. So you could see how like quickly and easily you could work with this. Now, if you want to increase the decay time, maybe we're just going to increase the time a little bit. I'm just going to jack that up a little bit. Wait till the light goes out. Right. So that sounds pretty cool. Now, if we could also take this, if I wanted to, and, you know, I could make it a bit more diffusive, spread this out a little bit. All right. And then back off our time here and get something that's a little bit more, a uh, little bit uh, more diffusive and dense in terms of the reverberant energy. See how much control that you have just with like a simple thing that just with one selection. So when you go through all the different selections and then even from here, we could switch between the different microphones. Right. And then from here, even uh, with the different chambers.
Try six. All right, you can hear that boxiness really stands out there in that room. And there too, right? So we've kind of tuned this into our first space here. So we'll go back and just uh, leave it at that. But again, you know, you can see how much control that you have over this. Really amazing, you know, beautiful sounding. Now, it's historically, I guess, you know, when, when you if you watch the videos on Universal Audio's website and you see sort of the history of these things, um, you know, they'll talk about, you know, Frank Sinatra and, you know, like all these, you know, um, uh, classic artists that have gone in there and used the studio and, and made records and, uh, you know, where part of the vocal sound or a key part of it was going through these chambers. And, uh, you know, if you, if you look at and load in some of the presets, these are, are presets from many of whom are people who have worked in these studios, right? Uh, so you see some of the, um, the names that are, are listed here. Al Schmidt in particular has done a lot of work out of that studio. And, um, you know, so there, these are people that, you know, um, you know, if you're just looking for particular starting, you know, places for, for some of these things, you could see how, you know, these are, are kind of good places, um, maybe to start if you just want to load something up. What I love about most about this is just all the, the, the amazing, unique tonal coloration that you can kind of get from it. So let's just kind of quickly go through and do a couple of other things. So what I also set up, because this is showing up as stereo, now the plugin itself can show up as a stereo, so stereo in, stereo out, uh, can show it as mono in, stereo out, and also mono in, mono out. So I have a pair of mono in, mono out plugins. And I'm just going to call up both of them here. I have them, the settings sort of tied together. So as I switch them, they'll both switch. And uh, what I would do here is uh, something with the guitar sound. All right, so uh, two guitars. They're heavy guitars. This is like a punk track here. Um, probably uh, a little bit of a departure from the way maybe uh, some people would demonstrate it. But just to show you how this is just a powerful tool. Obviously, for drums, you could see the benefit uh, that's right there. Um, but let's try something here with the guitars. And maybe I'll mute out the drums for a second. So for this, I'll probably uh, do something. Um, let's kind of pull the reverb time down. Um, I'm just going to bring the levels up just so we can kind of hear it exaggerated a little bit. And let's just see. Wait a second there for it to load up. And here we go. Okay, so we got this a little bit tight. I'm going to put in some pre-delay here. Let's see if we can create a little bit of depth with this. All right, so the width control, I was just trying to adjust the width control now, remembering that it's uh, these are mono for left and right. So it's a left and right guitar, one hard left, one hard right, and the mono reverbs are attached right to them. So maybe not the most classic uh, way to approach punk guitars, but uh, let's mix it in with the drums just to get a little bit of depth here. Sorry about the screen stuff here.
Charlie, let's just kind of mix in a little bit of uh, vocal here. Uh, so we got a, a lead vocal part, and the vocal itself is a distorted track. It was a track that was recorded over Driven uh, through um, uh, through uh, SM7 microphone, but purposely over Driven. So if you hear the distortion on here, that's uh, sort of meant to be, whether you like it or not. But um, put it in here, similar kind of thing, right? Uh, we'll do a tight setting, a little bit of pre-delay, minimum decay, here using the sit number six chamber. All right, so also have some no, background vocals that are sort of crammed in there as well. Maybe move those at a more of a distant setting here so you can get something kind of kicking with that. Make it sound like a real uh, gang vocal thing here in the chorus. Hate everything about you. And you hate everything. Right, this one quick last uh, go. Here. There's just like a, give you a, a good basic idea, especially with the drums, like, you know, how many options that you have with it. You could really hear it and then just, you know, dialing in with any particular sound, um, you know, especially when you get to things like R&B vocals, you know, uh, any kind of jazz vocals, you know, that that sort of leans a little bit more. Uh, towards the way it was classically used where you have that open space for the you know for the richness of the reverb but really amazing sounding great tool to have uh, for you know any kind of mix work uh, I think this is a, a great addition and a real surprise um, from uh, Universal Audio so really love this one apparently they've been working on it for a little while and a uh, really great release. I'm really happy with this one. So mix it with Mike, plug-in of the week, Universal Audio Capital Chambers. <laughs> 